Now, here's Michael Smirkanish. So I have long believed that prostitution should be legal, which has earned me the ire of many a listener over many years. In short, I think we'd all be better served if it were legal and regulated. My view is one predicated on individual liberty and safety, and also the belief that some among us will otherwise not enjoy sexual relations unless they have opportunity through a legalized system. I've referred to that in the past as the Quasimodo factor, all of which is why when I read a New York Times review of a new book, it's called Whore of New York, my curiosity was piqued from the review. For every few clumsy or fuzzy sentences, there's one straight out of Edith Wharton. Quote, perhaps while I am at work, I am like a very nice teacup in a fine dining restaurant used by many, but handled for the most part with care. I certainly have no aspirations to be kept in a cabinet somewhere gathering dust. Love that line. This is a memoir by a young person about a life in progress. And if it occasionally feels like an unfinished work, that doesn't detract from the book's powers as an original reflection on joy, anguish, sex, love and labor. The author is Liara Rue, who joins me now. Liara, you, you'll take that review from the Times, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, very honored, very flattered. So I did not know, as you report in the book, that there's a perennial debate as to whether sex work would exist under communism. My answer is, of course so. I mean, there's a reason it's called the oldest profession, no? Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. There have been so many attempts to eradicate sex work over the years, and none of them have been successful. I think um, it's something that people will always be drawn to uh, wanting to do it, and people will always want to hire someone. So, you know, no matter the the political environment, I think it'll always happen, whether it's legal or not. You, you know that some who will hear this conversation will immediately think of, of sex slavery. How do we prevent that from happening? And as I was reading the book, uh, the discussion is on page 99. Your explanation seems to be almost, and I know you're very politically oriented as well, your explanation mm-hmm. as to why that's not the case is almost a defense of Joe Biden's Build Back Better Act. If I can read, quote, what's the best way to ensure women are not trafficked into brutal sex slavery? There's many things that need to be done to avoid people turning to sex work in times of desperation. We need a more robust social safety net. Explain. So I think people who don't want to do sex work are often drawn to it because they need food, they need shelter, they need to get out of a bad situation as fast as they can. And sex work often is one of the few ways that you can access money very quickly. No need to do a job interview. Um, And, you know, I don't want anyone to have to do sex work who doesn't want to do it either. You know, Um, it is a very intense job. For some people, it can be traumatic just because of the nature of the work. And I think, you know, ensuring that there is a better system um, for women and other people who are leaving abusive relationships or who have been made homeless for whatever reason um, is really critical to making sure that everyone involved in sex work is involved consensually. What's the attraction besides the money, if there is one for you? In the book, you say, for me personally, sex is something that is less emotional than it is for most. You also say other girls I knew just unabashedly loved the sex. For some people, physical intimacy can feel overwhelmingly intense. What is it that caused you? I mean, like many of us, you initially thought of being a fireman uh, or a lot of other <laughs> professions, but this is but this is where you ended up. How come? Well, I think it's because, you know, I've always been adventurous. Um, and to be frank, I always loved sex. So um, it was never something that I was scared of. And of course, you know, not all the sex I had, um, as I've been doing sex work has been the best sex of my life. Um, but I would say a lot of it is akin to, you know, going on a Tinder date. I just get paid for it. So 
hard to complain we, with that. We, we are. You're, but you're at the high end if there is such a thing of the business, right? Absolutely. If someone wants to enjoy your company, they're spending what kind of money? Um, my rates start at two thousand for one hour. For an hour, and and if it's an entire evening, they're spending what? Um, for an overnight, it's ten thousand dollars. You know, in my business, as someone who's in radio, the typical career progression. This occurred to me as I was reading the book. The book, by the way. Horror of New York, a confession. In this business, historically, you started a 5,000 watt radio station in a very Mm -hmm. small market, and you hope to work yourself up the professional ladder, ultimately getting to a big market where you get to do morning drive. And if after that you want to pursue national syndication, that's something entirely different. That, by the way, is exactly the way it, it happened for me, albeit without having a tiny, tiny station. But that's mm-hmm. not the way that it works in your business. There's not a ladder, right? I mean, you don't start as a streetwalker at Times Square and then end up Liara Rue commanding 10 grand for an hour. Um, I, yeah, I think, you know, there are, are a lot of people who start out um, working on the street um, who do end up making it to a much higher level. And I think... Um, the difference with our industry perhaps is that a lot of people who started out on that level don't necessarily want to talk about their history because they know, um, people will look at them differently. Clients will treat them differently. Um, they want to have this facade of always having had money. You know, I think, uh, the most popular story for a lot of people is, uh, the good girl gone bad one where they're, oh, I'm from a rich family and I'm just doing this for fun. I don't even need to do it, you know, because that's what clients want to hear. But yeah, there is, there can be a ladder, you know, not everyone wants to climb up. A lot of people, once they make a certain amount of money, uh, they transfer to a different career. But I definitely have friends who um, started while they were teenage runaways, more or less, and now um, enjoy the work so much that um, they can't see themselves quitting. But but if someone wants to play at your level, they, they've mm-hmm. got to be good looking, right? I mean, first and foremost, they've got to be good looking. And secondly, I guess in the sack, they've got to have a particular area of expertise. Um, You know, you would think that, but there are plenty of people who are just good uh, at talking to people, you know, and I think so many people are drawn to hiring a sex worker, not necessarily for the sex, um, but for the intimacy. And when I first started out, I thought like you did, I thought that was a load of horseshit, to be frank. And um, yeah, then I met girls who, you know, were not the best looking, but they were making an insane amount of money. And it was all because they were good at creating this really warm, safe environment for their clients. And um, that's really what their specific clientele wanted. You address in the subject, you remind me that in the book, you address the subject. Apparently lots of people often ask, well, what do these guys have in common? And you say what they have in common is they all want to hire a sex worker. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people from all walks of life. Um, you know, everyone from train conductors and garbage men, um, to, fortune 500 CEOs, you know, so it's really the full range of society. We cuddled for a bit after I was buzzing with excitement. I loved it. It was absolutely intoxicating. We hadn't negotiated a price, but he handed me 500 in cash and a 20 for my cab home on the ride back. I stared at the cash in my hand. It felt incredible to have earned so much in 30 minutes, easy money. This is you reflecting on the very first time that you hire yourself out for sex. You also go on to say, I had wondered if I would feel a sense of shame of dirtiness, but you didn't. How did you feel? Honestly, I felt great. I felt, you know, like I had fun. Um, I helped someone feel better and they were taking care of me too. You know, I think, 
it actually felt a lot more altruistic than I thought it would. Um, you know, I think my first client too, he, um, was experienced, you know, had been around a lot of sex workers. And so he sort of knew the game and wasn't looking to take advantage of me or anything. Um, he just knew I needed the money and was happy to give it to me. And I think that have you ever me, felt, go on. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Have you ever felt that your life was imperiled? Um, there were moments where I thought I was potentially in danger. Looking back, I definitely wasn't. I was just dealing with a client who was maybe a little too intoxicated. Um, but yeah, it's a type of job that makes you paranoid because you do hear so many scary stories of things that happen to women. And a large part of it is there's no protection for girls like us. Um, if you go to the police after something violent, they'll probably just arrest you, you know? Um, and so you really have to get good at trusting your gut and being able to suss out what someone's intentions are. You have a genius IQ and you identify as being autistic. True. Uh, true. <laughs> Although I haven't gotten my you, IQ tested since I was a kid. So you, you contemplated a career as a fireman, as a quantum physicist, as an electrical engineer. I read the book waiting for the epiphany moment when you decided, hey, this, this is why I need to pursue sex work. It doesn't seem like there really was a flipping of a switch, true? Um, no, I think it was just something that I really felt drawn to. I still don't, I think it's just because I really am fascinated by people and sex work is one of the few industries where you really um, get to ask people really intimate and intense questions without it feeling weird. You know, maybe the only other one is being a therapist, but I didn't want to be in school that long. So, um, yeah, I, I really, um, was just so drawn to getting to see behind people's facades, you know, and sex work was absolutely the best way for me to do that. Here's how the book begins. I've been asked many times, when did you first think of starting sex work? I remember lying in bed quite young, praying to God, please don't ever let me stop believing in you. I know that otherwise I would do a lot of drugs, convert to communism and become a prostitute. During different periods of my life, I imagined myself in other careers. The earliest I remember was fireman. The second was quantum physicist. I then decided I wanted to be an electrical engineer, then a painter, a policy wonk, an academic. But I would lie awake at night thinking of whores. The title of the book, Whore of New York, what are you saying? Are you trying to own that descriptor? It's not a pejorative as you use it, right? It's not, you know, um, there is this concept of holy whores, um, you know, that's something more from antiquities, really like ancient Rome or ancient Greece. Um, there were whores who worked in temples um, who it was considered sacred work um, to do sex work, more or less. Obviously, now that's um, less of the case. Um, but the root of the word whore um, comes from those sacred women who worked in temples. Um, a little cheesy, I know, but <laughs> you got to let me indulge myself. Liara, biggest surprise in your book. You want to take a guess. What would I be most shocked to learn about you from reading your memoir? Oh, man. I think for a lot of people, um, it was that I chose to transition from working in tech to um, doing sex work. But I'm curious to hear what you're. All right, that is with. that is the wrong answer. That is not the correct answer. The correct answer can be found on page 59. Mark Levin. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. You're a Mark Levin fan. Oh, I was when I was a kid, you know, that's I've long since outgrown that. In other words, Rush Limbaugh was too bombastic for you, but Mark Levin, you thought was erudite. I mean, you know, I was nine years old. I have no defense other than that. Uh, your folks, people will want to know about the family dynamic, like who's in the loop and are they cool with it? What's the short answer? We're not giving away the whole book. Um, 
everyone is just about fine with it, um, except my dad, who's been really into QAnon, which, given the the Mark Levin and Rush Limbaugh obsession, maybe won't surprise you. Right. He he's a Trumper. Oh, yeah. And and mom with with whom you had difficulty growing up, uh, you seem like you've come to terms with her. That relationship is intact. And and I don't know if I would say accepting based on the book. What would I say? Um, she loves me a lot and she's really trying hard to understand the choices that I've made in life. Um, and I understand that they're kind of out there. So I'm happy to give her time to figure out how she feels about it and not pressure her one way or another. If Liara Rue were to have children of her own, by the way, do you contemplate having children? Um, you know, I used to think about it more, but um, it's just so much, so much time and money. I think I would need to find someone who would want to be a house husband. And, you know, those are few and far between. Okay, but work with me anyway. If you had a daughter and she came home and she wanted to, to pursue a life, not as a fireman or a quantum physicist, but as a sex worker, you would say what? Um. You know, I'd say, all right, um, just make sure you stay safe um, and let me know if you need anything. I think if it felt like she wasn't going to pursue it out of, you know, any sense of desperation, um, I would be totally fine with it because um, I have really enjoyed my experiences in the work. Liara, thanks so much. I wish you good things with the book. Thank you for dropping by to discuss it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. 